people, we are recording the session, so later on when you, when you get a chance to speak, uh, no gossip, no nothing naughty, nothing that you want to hold against you because we're going to do a little bit of editing. I will put this video up for those folks who couldn't attend. And also for other people, other speakers and other PSASA members who are keen to get started. All right, so just a, a very broad welcome. And I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves and we'll work our way back and, and speak to Jane in just a moment. I just want to say um, a welcome to Carl Schultz, who is our president, national president for the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa. And then welcome to Barbara Johnson, who is the uh, chapter president for the Durban chapter. And I just want to see, do we have any other chapter presidents online at the moment? Uh, no, we don't, but we do have Chris Vermeulen online, and Chris is our uh, business manager for PSASA, so he makes sure that we all do a good job. And then obviously we have some other people in, um, in various leadership positions, but we also have a number of visitors. One of them is Brandt van der Westhuizen, who is the chapter president for the Swakopmund chapter of the Professional Speakers Association of Namibia. So welcome to you, Brandt. Uh, please say hi to all of your um, good PSA in um, colleagues over there. We really enjoyed spending time with them before. We also have some other people who are not members of PSA or PSA in. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, you're more than welcome. So I'm going to go around now and just ask you very quickly. We'll start with Andrew Batters. Uh, just to turn, uh, unmute yourself, just to say hello to us. Let us know where you are in the country or in the world and, uh, and what it is you speak on. Hi, Andrew. Hi, good evening, Charlotte, and good evening to everybody. I'm Andrew Butters, based in Pretoria, with the Pretoria chapter, and uh, my particular topic that I speak on is uh, inspiring performance, focusing essentially on organizational and personal effectiveness. Great. Thank you, Andrew, and welcome. Hi, Carl. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, as you heard, I'm Carl Schultz. I'm speaking to you from Gauteng, from Benoni in Gauteng. And my topic is mainly business breakthrough. That's uh, medium to small business breakthrough and leadership. Thank you. Yeah, no, I spent the afternoon listening to your podcast. Uh, oh, so was, same. <laughs> thank you. We'll talk, we'll talk about that some more just now. Uh, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Mervyn, can um, you see where to... Yes, I can see now, thank you. Um, my name is Mervyn Davidovitz. I've um, been involved before, but I've taken a bit of a time out for about a year and a half um, to build up my coaching work. And my particular interest is resilience and entrepreneurship. That's the kind of focus that I um, enjoy working with. Very nice. And Mervyn, where are you in the country? Sorry, I'm in Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Lovely. All right. Uh, Luis, is it? Can you unmute yourself, Louise? Just hover down at the bottom of your, there you go. Yeah. Cool, good evening, everybody. I am based in Berlin, Germany. I used to be part of PSUN, like the um, Speakers Association in Namibia last year. And I'm very happy I received this invitation and I'm excited to hear and to learn. Very nice. Where, where are you at the moment tonight? In Berlin, Germany. In Berlin. Marvellous. All right. We are so going to brag about that. But you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Ian Hatton, in the car. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Uh, Ian Hatton. I'm a speaker, facilitator and writer. I um, am currently in a car. Uh, I'm actually attending the Cape Chapter PSA committee meeting at 8 o'clock, which is about 100 meters from where I'm parked. So that's why I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I'll leave five minutes early just to drive over to our president's house uh, here in Lakeside in Cape Town. Very nice. So you're just on the other side of the lake from me, which is great. Exactly. I can almost see you. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris Boise. Oh, hi, Chris. Oh, there I am. Hi, good evening, everybody. Nice to be with you. I'm Chris Boise. I speak on communication and presentation skills. I'm speaking at the moment from Greenpoint in Cape Town. I also do quite a lot of work with entrepreneurs and small businesses in the area of branding and developing value proposition. Nice to be with you. Marvelous. Thank you, Chris. 
Um, Afra, you're next. Can you work out? Because I know you're on your iPhone. Can you see how to unmute yourself? There, perfect. Yes, I can. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Afra Shiming Chase. I'm a financial planner and consultant by trade. I speak on financial issues, mostly um, regarding women, and I'm also a motivational speaker. Marvelous. I'm attending because you invited me. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I've uh, been wanting to get you in one, in one of these meetings for some time. Um, Afra, yeah. where are you again in the country? I am in Vintuk, Namibia. In Vintuk. Marvelous. Yes. All right. Thank you. And thank then we you. have Helen. Helen, your video is off as well, but maybe you can speak to us. Hi, yes, I'm not sure why the video is off. I try to figure it out, but they haven't got there. But good evening, everybody. I'm in Cape Town um, and I work in the field of health and well-being, physical, mental and emotional. So I speak um, and do presentations and workshops around those topics as well. Thank you, Helen. Welcome. Thanks. And Toinette. Can you, Antoinette, you need to unmute yourself? Do you need some help? Problem? There we go. There you go. You can Is see. It Okay, so maybe it was just delayed. Okay, as I said, I was interrupting Louise from Berlin, so um, my apology for that. Louise is my second name, and I thought by fluke you were referring to me. Um, <laughs> so welcome, and thank you very much. Uh, I speak on behavior, excellence, and support uh, individuals to excel beyond fear. Very nice. Thank you. And Where from you Pretoria and Gauteng. Pretoria, marvelous. All right. Penny Milner-Smith, it's so good to see you again. Thanks, Charlotte. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. I'm speaking to you from Durban, South Africa. Um, I speak and train and facilitate and write in the areas of ethics in the workplace, as well as um, anti-corruption compliance. And I work largely in Southern Africa, mostly in Zimbabwe, where the winds of change mean that this is a topic in great demand. And obviously in South Africa, which is my home base. And for those of you from Namibia, I'm really looking forward to coming to your country for the first time. Thank you. Fantastic. Very nice. Uh, Joni, who's just come off a stationary bike. <laughs> I have. This is, I promise you, this is gym gear, not uh, Nati. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should say that up front. <laughs> okay, so I'm based in Johannesburg and I speak on the Fab Quotient, which is a book that I co-wrote with another speaker. I speak on the Enneagram, I speak on emotional intelligence, and I speak on general well-being and resilience. And then more recently on the science of sleep and how that is the uh, Swiss Army knife of health. So quite a few topics, but all dovetailing and uh, resilience. Very good. Thank you, Joni. And you're in Johannesburg. All right. Then we have Brunt van der Westhuizen. Hello, Brunt. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. So I'm Brunt. I speak on creativity, creative leadership, creative thinking, getting you to move up in the world instead of just on a bit. Uh, I write. I interview people, I dabble. I'm from Namibia, Swakopunt, currently president of Swakopunt Toastmasters and president of the Swakopunt chapter for the Professional Speakers Association of Namibia. Very good. Thank you, Brent. Welcome. Uh, Vessel. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Vessel Westeisen, currently based in Cape Town. Uh, I'm financial planner of trade, uh, I've got uh, my own financial planning company and really speaking and presenting is, is, is a hobby for me and uh, I'm focusing especially on the future of financial planning, financial planning literacy, financial planning wellness and also dabbled with a bit of law. Uh, I really like as my background's also in, in the law environment. Uh, so that's that's more or less me, Charlotte. Thank you, Vessel. And and you said you're in Cape Town at the moment. Very nice. Yes, yes. I'm now currently based for the past two and a half years in Cape Town. Marvelous. Welcome. All right. 
Barbara from Durban. Hi, everybody. Yes, Barbara Johnson from Hillcrest, Durban. And yes, I am president of the KwaZulu Natal chapter. I speak on self leadership through the meaning, purpose, and fulfillment of life. And recently, given that I work with people development per se, my focus has been on the financial side and I have very excitedly found a vehicle around cryptocurrencies and blockchain to speak about. So it's been very new and very diverse and very exciting. Thank you, Barbara. Welcome on the, on the uh, event. Uh, Mandy Russell. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm based in Cape Town at the moment. I just got back from my home in the Karoo yesterday. And I'm a performance coach and I work in the space of authentic leadership and people developing their own unique um, leadership style, success through delegation. And then I work with business leaders when success is no longer enough and they want their health and relationships and leaving a legacy to be part of their focus. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And um, I see a lot of old familiar faces from my life in Durban many decades ago. So hello. Uh, it's scary how many Durban people have moved to Cape Town. Uh, we, we love both places, but we're really happy here. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. And then we have Nsiki. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, you are. Hello. How are you? Hi, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. I must say thank you to Joni for extending an invite for me to join tonight's conversation. Good. Uh, so Joni and I work together and we speak on energy management and resilience. And I also do quite a bit of work with youth entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs, specifically in the space of social entrepreneurship. Um, and joining me as well is Pila over here. Hello, everybody. Hi, <laughs> And Pila uh, mainly speaks on ministry and um, ma man manhood development. Very nice. Lovely. Welcome. Welcome very much. I appreciate you being here. And then Chris from Mielin. Thank you. Uh, I uh, live in uh, Pretoria East, Berry Glen, and uh, I speak on uh, project management and uh, technical report writing. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Bruce Page from Durban. Evening, everybody. I'm an ecologist by profession, and I speak on ecological issues and ex-academics. I also speak about education and particularly online training. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Roger Knowles from Durban, but it's head is hey, hi, Roger. <laughs> Can you unmute yourself? Do you want some help? All right, All right. there you go. Roger? Am I unmuted? You oh, thank unmuted. you. Okay, hi everybody. I'm an attorney and that's my day job. I'm in Durban, KwaZulu Natal. I've been an attorney for 40 years, so it's, it's like a difficult habit to break. I prefer speaking and I speak on um, I, t I teach companies, I was with one today, how to get paid on time every time by all your customers. But my preference is for alternate dispute res resolution and particular mediation and the skills involved in negotiation and those two overlap completely. Very good. All right. Thank you, Roger, and welcome. Roger's a past uh, president of the Durban chapter, past national president. And so is Jacques de Villiers, a past national president. But Jacques has sent us a message saying, that uh, his microphone isn't working, uh, so he can't speak. So he says he speaks and trains on selling, marketing, content management, uh, like I said, past national president of um, PSI, PSA, and a great person to have a cup of coffee with and to bring storm about your business. Um, Adolf, Adolf was supposed to be on, the, uh, on this event as well, but Adolf was just boasting that he and Jacques had a really great meeting, and I was thinking about two weeks ago, Ad, um, Jacques and I did as well. So. Uh, thank you very much, Jacques, for, for sharing so generously. Then we have uh, somebody skylight. Uh, Thusa, are you there? Maybe you're not. Uh, all right, we'll come back. Um, and then Chris Beerman. Chris, I'm going to unmute you. 
can you hear us? Chris? Yes, Charlotte, can you, can you hear me? We can hear you. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I'm based in Bloemfontein. I'm a visually impaired person. I'm clinically classified as being blind. My day jobs, uh, I work as a physiotherapist, but I've got a passion for training and speaking, and I use golf as a vehicle to, to train people about the principles of success. Very good. Close, thank you, and welcome. Uh, Nikki Abdenor. Hi everyone, um, I'm Nikki, I'm a clinical psychologist by profession and I'm an inspirational keynote speaker Great. based in Cape Town. Based in Cape Town, are you back in Cape Town or are you still... Georgia no, no, I'm back, in, I'm back in Cape Town. Oh, okay, welcome. So bo very boring. Ah, oh, shame man, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Thuso, are you there? Thuso, can you hear us? No, he's not paying attention. All right. Um, then we have Taryn Lee. Hi, Taryn. There Hi go. there. Hi. I luckily made it just in time. Um, yeah. I had a little bit of toddler tantrums that I'm still dealing with in the background here. So I do apologize. Azalea is saying hi. Hi. She's, <laughs> she's dried up a little tears. <laughs> but it's uh, nice to see everybody. Good. Thanks, Taryn. Um, you're, where are you in the country? Oh, sorry. Apologies, guys. I'm from Pretoria in South Africa. Fantastic. All right. Okay, folks, thank you very much. I think that is everybody. Um, if I've missed anybody, I do apologize. We're going to now, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Jane. And uh, I'll just unmute her over here. Uh, Jane and I chatted. So just, just to kind of position people, if you um, haven't read all the stuff we sent out about this, we just completed our Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa, our annual convention in Johannesburg about three weeks ago. And we had a presentation there about podcasting, which was very inspiring. So all of a sudden, uh, in the background, people are talking about wanting to start their own podcasts. Uh, Carl has a podcast. Uh, I have one, sort of. Um, who else? Is there anybody else? And maybe you can do a show of hands or do the electronic show of hands. If you have a podcast already, even if it's like really at the beginning, if you're doing something in that space. Anybody here? And Penny. All right. And Siki, thank you. Good. All right. So um, we, what we wanted to do was just to try and tap into the experience of other people who already have um, been doing this work uh, to learn about what, how we can do it. And there's obviously a whole lot of things like what is our motivation for doing a podcast? What are the technical issues for, for setting one up uh, to actually record it, uh, to get it up online, uh, to host it, all of that. There's a lot of technical questions, but sometimes the more important questions are about the actual you know, purpose of, of the podcast, what it means for our, our branding, as well as the message that we're trying to put out and the content that we're trying to create. Uh, so that's why we're speaking to Jane Morgan, who has a lot of experience in, in media, and she is a creator of podcasts, and she does some on behalf of clients. So we're going to ask Jane to, to share on that. And what we also have is, I have a, a, did an interview last week with on my radio show with a um, podcaster from Australia. And that recording is available. We'll have that in PSA Essays uh, Facebook page and it's already on the blog on PSA. So if you want that recording, let me know. Uh, but what we really wanna do is tap into as much of the experience that we can so that we set ourselves up to do a better job. And Carl was just sharing uh, by email earlier on, I hope I'm not giving anything away, but Carl is planning some, some training as well on this in terms of the technical aspects. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, Jane, I'm going to ask you, um, I've given a very brief introduction about what you do, but maybe you want to explain um, a little bit more about the work that you do, and then just speak a little bit about your podcast experience and what you want to share and then we can start asking some questions. Sure. Folks, if you want to turn your videos off just to save bandwidth, that's quite all right. Um, I'm sure, Jane, you know, if you do podcasts, you don't mind not seeing all the faces. Not at all. I'm much more words than pictures, yes. All right. You want me okay. to keep mine on? I don't mind either way. Yes, yeah, so if you could keep yours on, then. Okay. All right. 
Um, cool. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. And um, it's very nice to know who I'm speaking to and to get an idea of what you're all doing. I have to say it's very intimidating speaking to a whole lot of people who spend their entire lives speaking and are very good at it and are, are part of an association that does that. So I will try and live up to um, what is probably a very high standard. So um, first of all, um, I wanted to say two things. One is, um, I will talk a little bit about what I do now and uh, give you a little bit of background as to how I came to do it. Um, but I thought what would be most useful probably for this session, um, especially as everybody I'm sure who's in the session is here because you, you've got some idea of what podcasting is, the fact that it might be something you want to do, um, but you may not know where to start. So that I think uh, using this as interactively as possible is probably a really good idea and you'll probably have questions. So the one thing I wanted to say was no question is too silly to ask. Um, I know this because I myself come at this not from the technical side or, or the, you know, I'm a hundred years old and uh, I didn't come, I didn't grow up with a cell phone or a computer. Um, so I also sometimes struggle with the technicalities of this. So I've learnt uh, a lot and I've learnt the hard way. So don't feel that there's anything, it's a good chance actually to ask what you might think of as quite basic questions. Um, so let's do that. Um, and the other thing that I want to start off by saying is that um, all of you, uh, because I do what I do, I can, I can usually think of uh, a podcast solution to almost anything that anybody asks me or anyone I meet. I usually at some stage end up saying to them, you know what, you need a podcast. Um, so, but, but the fact is that particularly you guys, you all could do podcasts and very successfully. If you go onto iTunes and you go to particularly the American iTunes store um, and you look at the top, top podcasts, um, the ones that are doing very, very well um, in terms of listeners, there is so much there that is all about uh, self-improvement, self-help, coaching, the better you, the, all of the lots and lots of the things that you are talking about lots of different angles on those kinds of ideas but everyone that um who introduced themselves you are all nearly all i think um forgive me if i'm wrong doing something um that does exactly that that, uh, that helps people be better versions of themselves and that is a very good thing to be doing as far as podcasting is concerned it, it's um it's out there to be done um, so let me first of all just tell you a little bit about myself um, because it explains why I'm doing what I'm doing. So you can hear that I'm not South African. I'm sorry about that. I am British. I have been in South Africa since 1995. It just sounds like I arrived about three weeks ago. Clearly I don't have any of accents. I'm a radio producer by trade. Um, so I used to work for the BBC in the UK. Um, I came out here to work for SAFM just after it became SAFM from being radio South Africa. I then married my boss, so I thought I'd better leave. Um, and I then went to 702 and produced John Robbie's morning show for a couple of years and then became head of the head of head of the 702 productions department, um, which is making all their on-air ident material and doing adverts for clients and doing promotions for clients and that kind of thing. Because actually my real love in life is recording, editing and mixing sound and telling stories using sound. That's what I love doing most. Um, so um, I then became a freelancer because I had little babies um, and I was freelancing as a writer. Uh, I also am a media trainer um, and I still do that. I do I train execs to do radio and television interviews, um, which is useful because it's quite lucrative. Um, but in 2007, I started Podcart because I love radio production and I thought, well, actually what happened um, that was that uh, I was approached to launch the Mail and Guardian podcast. So in 2007, the Mail and Guardian, because they like that, thought what we need is a podcast, which is probably, uh, the word podcast was only d coined in 2005. So the Mail and Guardian were very ahead of the time. Um, so because I kind of had a vague connection with them, my husband had as well, and he was going to present the thing, we, um, as a sort of Des and Dawn of radio type uh, duo ended up producing the Mail and Guardian podcast. And that's when I started to understand what podcasts were. Um, so I thought, this is fantastic. I can start a business making podcasts. This was in 2007. If you, I don't know how many of you are actually podcast listeners um, uh, or not, or if you're just getting to it or whatever, but think about this, that's 11 years ago. 
there are still people who don't quite know what one is. 11 years ago, it was, this was not an easy sell. Let's put it that way. Um, but anyway, we did the Berlin Guardian one. Um, and I then did actually manage to persuade a few biggish brands to try it. I got Old Mutual to have a go. Um, I got Woolies to have a go. And we had this sort of degree of success. Um, and that was before some very important changes in technology, the smartphone being one. Um, there's no question about it. The introduction of smartphones has made all the difference to podcasting the world over, um, but particularly in South Africa. Um, smartphones, cars with operating systems and computers in the, in, inside your car, um, just the ease with which you can now access and uh, access podcasts, access, uh, access podcasts, access audio on the internet. Um, we are all building our own websites. 11 years ago, you wouldn't be building your own website, or you, if you were, you would be very unusual. Now, you can build a website in a very short amount of time using Wix or um, uh, any of those, uh, Squarespace, or any of those many uh, um, uh, ways of doing it that there are. And you can insert audio into that very, very easily. So there, there's a reason why this whole thing is taking off, and that, to be honest, largely is to do with technology. So, uh, I, in 2007, I was sort of ahead of my time, which is the only time in my life that that's ever been true. Um, fast forward a bit, over the last two or three years, everywhere in the world, people are getting more and more into podcasts, and that is also happening here in South Africa. So, um, so what has happened since then is, well, there are a number of people who are podcasting. And of course, the radio stations are the people who started doing more and more of it because their, their content is already in podcastable format. Um, so for maybe four or five years ago, most of the podcasts you would find in South Africa probably were coming from radio stations. There weren't that many people who were producing podcasts just for podcasts. That is now changing. Um, so where I fit into the whole thing is um, I tend, because I'm, I'm a producer of content, I tend to end up making podcasts for other people. I don't have a podcast of my own, for instance. Um, I am involved in some startup podcasts, so I can, there's a lot I can tell you about how you start a podcast. Um, but, so for instance, um, last year for six months, I was making a mountain bike and a running podcast for the old mutual world of endurance platform. So I was a hired hand, basically. I was hired as a producer to create a podcast, um, and which we did. And we did it very successfully, actually. We got lots and lots and lots of downloads eventually. And I'll tell you a bit about how you publicize podcasts in a minute. Um, so that's what I, what I tend to do. Um, as I say, I have got a few startups. I'm doing a podcast for Rhodes at the moment. I also am, um, if any of you are in Cape Town, <clears throat> and some of you seem to be, if you are parents of teenagers, I don't know if anyone there is uh, a member of the Facebook group called The Village. You can tell me, it's very unnerving, can I just say, talking into this void, because no one can speak to me at the moment. Um, but if you, if you know anything about uh, the Facebook group, The Village, it's, it's basically a, a, a place for people who are raising uh, teens and tweens to go and share advice and to talk to each other about how difficult it is and generally um, it's, a, it's a safe space to, to bring up issues and that kind of thing um, and I thought these people need a podcast as you, this is what happens um, and th they did agree with me so um, that is my sort of pet project startup that we, we started um, creating a podcast, podcast for the village which is sort of beginning to um, to blossom um, so I mean what I can do in this space um, is talk to you a bit about the kinds of things that I think uh, are, would be successful um, in, in, as podcasting goes. I can talk to you about uh, creating an audience. I can tell you for nothing that the biggest challenge to anybody who wants to start a podcast is finding and growing an audience. Obviously, you need to start off with a very clear idea of who you want to talk to and the kinds of things you want to say. And we can talk about the actual content as well. Um, but it's even people who you know would love your content. So for instance, take the village as an example, there are 17 and a half thousand people in that Facebook group. Every single one of those people would, we know because we talk to them every day, love the content of this podcast. 
we do not have 17 and a half thousand downloads every time that we put up a podcast because people still find the technology slightly off-putting they don't always quite know how to get hold of it or you know they'll they'll see it go maybe go past in their facebook uh news stream but they can't click and, li and listen to it there and then. so it's it's that is the challenge for everybody um the world over but in south africa you're dealing with a, a a younger podcast market, fewer people, issues of data and bandwidth. Um, and uh, yeah, the other thing that's also true, and this is, a, it is an opportunity for you guys to do something different, is there's a lots of really bad stuff out there. Um, that it, just having a microphone and a way of recording is not the answer to really good podcasting, I believe. I'm a bit of a content uh, snob in a way in that I, I believe you can't ask people to listen to bad quality, unedited, rubbishy audio. Um, why the hell would they listen? I mean, really. And the other thing you have to remember is that a lot of people who are getting into podcasts in South Africa are doing so because they have been somehow introduced to a lot of the podcasts that are coming from the States and from the UK. Um, and that sounds very different from the sort of very sort of amateur stuff that you sometimes get here. And it also actually sounds very different from a lot of South African radio. It's a very different kind of sound. It's much more recorded, it's built, it's, it's denser, it's, it's layered, it's more documentary style. Um, some of it is straight interview, but even if it's straight interview, you'll still get a really great opening. You'll still not get, I mean, if you listen to a lot of that South African podcasts, you hear everybody sort of, it would be like, I'll tell you what it'd be like, it would be like us broadcasting what we just did now at the very beginning of this whole process that we did with zoom and you know can you hear me and do you, what have you got your microphone on i mean sometimes that's what you hear in podcasts you know that's not riveting so um yes i'm going to stop speaking now because i think it's uh, uh, i think maybe the most use i can be to you is if you want to ask me specific things especially i mean obviously some of you are already podcasting is there something that you want to discuss or suggest or whatever hello <laughs> Person. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know what you're saying about the uh, podcast from overseas because you know clearly there's a whole entire production team behind it. You know, and I listen to um, them reading all, all the people involved in that podcast, and I think it, it's me and my nephew uh, because yes. my nephew does the editing for me. Uh, and there, there's a lot more to it than that. All right, so we got some questions. But just, well, just, just on that, I, I don't yeah. want to run away. I don't want. I don't want you to then run away with the idea that oh well, we can't do it then. That that's that's definitely not true. And uh, you're right. I mean, there are endless teams of people, including people who compose music, especially and do the sound design and the publicity. I mean, obviously, it would be great to have a whole team. Um, I think my point is that people's ears are becoming attuned to quite a high standard of production. Yes. Um, and we do need to remember that. It is possible with some work for us to produce really great stuff without it being a whole team. But it is, you have to remember that I do think you owe it to your listeners to create something that's, that's really worth listening to. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And just before we get to the, to the questions that are starting is, um, an important thing for us to learn is is that this is a new skill. So I think uh, it, it's worth it that we we try it and we experiment and, and we may not be very good, but let's just try that try it anyway. Um, I I, my, I know that my radio show, um, it's not like there are thousands of listeners either um, when I'm on air. Um, Which and, and radio are you on? It's hash, hashtag radio online. Oh okay. Yeah, and so. Um, but it was a skill that I wanted to learn. So I, I don't market any of my podcasts uh, or my shows unless I know that that is going to be something that is really fascinating. Um, otherwise, you know, there's, there's other reasons for me doing it. Uh, but I also know that I'm a lot better now than I was when I started nine months ago. So um, yeah, we got a process and, and we need to start. Otherwise, we, we will never grow. All right, we're going to get to the questions. Let's start with Mandy because she raised her hand. Mandy, I'm going to unmute you. Do you want to ask your question? Great. Sorry, I just then muted you in the attempt to unmute myself. So, Jane, thanks for this. I really appreciate it. And I've had the briefest conversation and about getting the audience right. And it, given that it's so hard to market and grow a podcast, is really having a clear niche the critical thing in your view? 
I do think that. Um, I think what podcasts do exceptionally well is to talk to a community of people or a community of interest or a niche interest or and that niche doesn't have to be tiny by the way so for instance when I was doing this road running and uh, mountain biking podcast um, we knew who we were talking to mountain bike is a very good example actually because it's a it's one of those um, it's a, the fastest growing sport in South Africa people who do it love it you know it's how do you know that someone is a mountain bike it's like crossfit they tell you you know and and people and they've got their own language and they've got their own they talk about it all the time that is like perfect podcast stuff um so it does that very well because obviously radio um which is the other way of sort of dealing reaching people through some kind of audio medium um has to be general because it's you know it, it's it's a whole different thing you cannot be that niche in a, in a radio commercial radio station and all our radio stations are commercial to some extent even the sabc they're still taking advertising um you could not give over half an hour of commercial radio time to one single subject like that because you know you start run the risk of losing your listeners but so podcasts can now step in and say okay we aren't talking to 10 million people we're talking to 500,000 people say it's more than that but take that as an example but we know that those 500,000 people we know exactly what they want to talk about we know what they're interested in and we can give it to them and we can indulge ourselves in this half an hour in in whatever it is whether it's mountain biking or knitting or or you know trying to change your life in some sort of way so niching is uh useful because it, i think it exploits the strengths of 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 the medium uh, as a podcast and then and then it also means that you've got a much clearer uh path towards actually reaching those people um because then you then you've got you know a scattergun approach to trying to publicize a podcast is never going to work i mean a scattergun approach to publicizing anything isn't really going to work but um it it allows you to focus on the channels that you know your people are going to be in. Now you guys are slightly, it's slightly more complicated for you because it's not so obvious. You know, I mean, everybody potentially is an audience for you. Um, so I think starting with a, with a clearish focus will help you a lot. Um, it will help you get that messaging right, be able to describe it easily so that immediately, you know, what is this going to do for me? Ah, I know what it's going to do for me. And Get a, you know, then say, right, I know that the kinds of listeners that I want are going to be here and, and here I'm going to talk to. So niching, yes, I think it's a really, uh, if it's an, an important part of your thinking um, when you're thinking about podcasts because it allows you to be much more impactful, first of all, in your content and also in your marketing. Does that make sense? I, I think it does. If I can just answer uh, on behalf of Mandy there. So we have a follow-up question there. Um, and Siki has asked two questions, but the second one is how, how do you find and identify um, that niche or that market? Um, well, I think the process surely has to be, what is it that you want to say? Um, what is your expertise? What is the added value? What is the content? We, I mean, everything starts with the content and good content and good content, presumably if you are, um, and I wrote down everybody's specialism and Nsiki's on the wrong page. Okay, so you, Nsiki was talking about energy management, right? I mean, that is a, I mean, just that title itself makes me want to listen. Um, and resilience. resilience. Resilience is a, I mean, it's a, funny enough, we did a, a, a whole thing on resilience on the a Village podcast recently. Um, and uh, so obviously resilience is one of those topics that is, is a little bit crowded. Energy management, not so much maybe. Female entrepreneurs, that's another possibility that is, you know, has, a, has it got an obvious uh, uh, focus to it. Um, so that you, you decide based on what you want to say and what you're trying to get across, I, I would say. Um, and then from there, everything flows. You want to, okay, so if you're talking to, to female entrepreneurs, you will know better than I do what is the best way of getting to them. And, and, and then I'm afraid it is, it's not one big thing, it's lots and lots of little things. It is posting on Facebook, uh, Facebook groups, joining Facebook groups, 
posting links everywhere you can find. Um, websites, email, actually, I have to tell you, is an exceptionally good way of publicizing um, a, a podcast. Um, I don't know why, but it, well, I do know why, I suppose it logically, is that um, a lot of people are in a position to click on an audio link when they're reading their email, that more often than if they are, say, scrolling through Facebook on their phone. Um, so I've certainly found um, that using emailing lists, so for instance, if you're part of a mailing list, you guys have a mailing list, or you, if, if, you, if you're part of an organisation that is to do with female entrepreneurs and that has a mailing list, that's a very good way of getting your message out there about uh, podcasts. Email is a very good way of doing it. In fact, we built the uh, World of Endurance podcasts and we got hundreds of thousands of downloads in the end, largely using what we had, which was a, a very extensive mailing list. But email is a very good way of doing it. So, um, uh, yes, what was the original? Oh, yes. So, how do you find your identify the right niche? Well, it'll be driven by what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. And no, that's very good. And, and I think you've answered the other question as well about how you market and grow a podcast. It, it certainly is going to be. Uh, it's a, a slog. Long yeah. It is. It is it's a lot. It, it is. And it's, 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 you have to, who, this, anyone who's talking about resilience, grit, um, staying power, you know, all of the things that you guys are talking about, um, you need a lot of that in terms of, 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 of getting the, the audience together. So um, social media is an obvious way of doing it. Email is a good way of doing it. Um, I, m trying to get your network to, to support you. Um, is, is a good way but before you get on to all that you do also need to have it needs to look good um, it needs to you need uh, if you're going to have a, a if you're going to create a podcast then it needs to have a, a good looking and impactful logo if you go and look on iTunes which is iTunes is a very confusing place in many ways but if you go and look on itunes you will see every i could in order to put a, a podcast on itunes you have to have a, a square logo and you'll see all the many logos and actually the ones that you know that you can see the ones that work and the ones that don't work as well so it needs a look and feel it needs a brand you are creating a product you know you're creating a product that you're trying to get people interested in um it needs um so yes, it needs to look good, it needs to sound good, it needs to have a good focus. You know, what is this podcast gonna do for me? It's not just yet another self-help podcast, it's gonna do something more specific perhaps, because it, again, it allows you to, uh, it gives you a hook to hang, on, hang it on. Um, and if you've got something that's unusual, then, then you can create PR around that. So, you know, you can, um, get yourself into magazines or onto, uh, uh, internet magazines or whatever talking about the fact that you know you may have the country's first ever I don't know golfing leadership through golfing podcast that's a, that sounds like a brilliant one I immediately want you know that's a very good example of a, I can imagine a podcast working very well because it's it's got a, it's already got a hook and but this is no different really from trying to, to, to sell anything to anybody um, so you do need to think about it in those terms um, what is it that's going to differentiate me I need to look good I need to be immediately, it needs to be immediately understandable what it is that this podcast is about and what it's going to do for me and, and, and it needs to sound good and it needs to be entertaining because ultimately you are creating programming that you want people to listen to. So it needs to be engaging um, and it needs to what make them want to listen and then keep them listening. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to add to that uh, two things in terms of marketing. One is that you know, a forum like this, like PSA, um, the PSA community Facebook group, which we've just recently started, uh, we, we, we can't use PSA to market ourselves. That's not appropriate. But the community group, we can, we can go in there and, and talk and share, and, uh, share resources. But we, we need to support each other. So, you know, as we're starting and learning in terms of podcasts, then you know, all of us or, you know, in our chapters, um, we should listen to each other's podcasts, download them, subscribe, give some, you know, helpful feedback. Um, and when we find some, some quality podcasts and content between us, we should really make a big noise about it online. Um, mm. You know, if we support each other, that would be very helpful. Yes. The, other thing, uh, the other thing which I found very useful in terms of thinking about the podcast is 
you know, what is the purpose of it? Not the, necessarily the content, but you know, why would I take, you know, essentially a day of my week, uh, every week to do a radio show and turn it into a podcast and do a blog post. Um, that in, in, in my case, I am rebranding myself from previous content and trying to create a name for myself in a new field. So being able to talk about this and put out the podcast, <laughs> frankly, even if like, you know, only three people listen, the fact that I have a podcast on this topic, um, I'm learning about the topic, but also I'm convincing people that I, I'm committed to it and that I, I've got something to say. Uh, so we can use the podcast to, um, to market ourselves as speakers uh, or our other content, which is very, very valuable. But as speakers, we're always looking for other content that we can package in some way, maybe as a, a, you know, a free giveaway or follow-up material to training or, or speaking. Uh, so even if we don't necessarily have the downloads of an audience out there who are finding us online, to be able to complete a, uh, a, a keynote event or a training event and say, there's more material and here's where you can find it, that in itself is, is really valuable. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that is true. Um, in fact, I was having a conversation about this today. I mean, obviously, what I'm doing is, is trying to build a, a, a career, m largely making podcasts for other people. And actually, yes, obviously, it, it val it's valuable to a brand to have a podcast in terms of getting messages out there and content to people but it's also valuable to a brand to be seen to have a podcast especially at the moment because it's sort of it still feels like okay so these people actually kind of have a sense of what people are into and it's it's still a little bit ahead of the curve maybe on the curve but it it's it you know so so there are you're quite right there are there are a number of, of sort of pr benefits to it and i mean you know that i do think um that you might look at so obviously everybody here has a specialist subject they have subjects they know a lot about but you don't necessarily have to try and get your all your knowledge or your or, or, to, or to try and recreate what you do via the podcast you could say well i'm going to do a i don't know a, a wellness tip of the day and you could do a five minute podcast that comes out every day or even a three minute podcast you know that there, there are so many the, the lovely thing about it is that we now can all be our own producers um so you know it doesn't have to be a, a massive deal it doesn't have to be a big production it could be um some quirky if there's somebody who did who's doing uh they do it with, with language, so they, they do a sort of, you know, Afrikaans word of the day or Potter word of the day. And, and I mean, they literally are two or three minutes long and it's, you know, they're very successful. So there are lots of different ways you can do it. The, a good thing to do if you are thinking about doing this is go and trawl around and see what podcasts are there, especially, as I say, go into those iTunes, um, into those iTunes vast stores of podcasts and see what's in your noteworthy. I don't, I don't know... Um, who here is familiar with messing around with, uh, on iTunes, but it's, it has this section of, of new and noteworthy um, and also shows you what are the top 10, top 10 episodes and the top 10 um, uh, podcasts in that particular section. And look at what people are doing, you know, um, steal ideas um, because if it's going well and if it's, it's, if people are loving it in the States, then the chances are that in a little while, a little while they're going to start loving it here too. Um, so as I say, you can think, Think laterally. I'm just seeing things coming up on the side here. Am I? Um, somebody was asking about tools. Uh, we got tools, but let's just go back to the question beforehand. Um, Ian Ian Hatton's question: uh, What are the skills that we need to develop in order to host our podcast or create it? Um, well, I, I'm. Would I be right? Do you think in assuming that this is to do with actually making the making the thing and I'm actually creating a podcast. Ian, you need to tell us, is it about the production or is it about the um, interview? Ian? Yeah, um, it, whatever. You know, we speak so we are to speak, but um, yes. <laughs> you're ahead of the game. should look at in terms of uh, the differences between speaking on a podcast versus speaking um, on, a, on a stage. Um, and and perhaps a little bit about the tools, which I know is a question coming up anyway, is, uh, you know, the actual creating uh, special equipment required, that kind of thing. Um, 
I, I think, I mean, that you are all ahead of the game. And well, look, let's just stop, pause there for a second. Um, it isn't a foregone conclusion that your podcast necessarily contains you. Um, or it might be that you're going to interview people. Or it might be that actually you're going to collect voices of people who've got amazing stories to tell about a particular thing. Um, it doesn't just have to be you talking. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it probably is better if it isn't. Um, because it gives you a bit more, you know, allows you to do a, a greater variety of things and do different things and be creative and that kind of thing. So, um, but... Obviously, one of the things you could do is decide that you yourself want to put forward a, a, a podcast with you in it talking. Um, and of course, you will have the advantage of um, being able to do that, which is very useful. Lots of people can't. I'm sure you've heard them. Um, so, yes, obviously, you need to develop a, 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 good, uh, a good presentation style, which I'm sure you will have. Um, the, the, the very important thing you also need is to be able to record yourself successfully know what that means um, and also be able to do some kind of digital editing and that's what I mean when I say you know you need to be able to you know that even if you're a brilliant speaker the chances are if you're going to talk for 10 minutes there are going to be things that you want to cut out you want to might want to take it you might make you know mess something up you might restart something it might all not be going well at the beginning you know even now listening to me now is probably fine but if you actually played this back you would you know i could cut this down to a, a much more sort of impactful and and less drivelly kind of uh, format so um yes speaking is one of them um thinking about it as creativity of creatively as possible is another um, there are lots and lots and lots of interview podcasts you could do an interview podcast but if you were going to do an interview podcast then try and think a bit laterally about that um, using other people whatever so that's the, so creative thinking around uh, and program making is one good skill but then in terms of the more practical stuff um, you do need to, and, and I know it's, it may sound slightly daunting uh, and it is a bit actually, but but it, it's not beyond anybody's capacity to learn a bit about digital editing. And people who are already podcasting probably do know how to do it. There is free editing software out there. Audacity is the sort of I think still the kind of industry industry standard in terms of not not in terms of paid for stuff, but in terms of free editing software. Audacity is the one that's been around for ages it's the most stable it's very easy to use you don't need to do anything particularly complicated with it you just need to sort of top and tail things so try that uh hindenburg is also apparently good but i think you have to um i think you have to pay for that i personally use something called adobe audition um which if you want um, a sort of bigger uh and more sophisticated program it costs me, it's part of the Adobe suite and they do, um, uh, they've got a video, I can't remember what any of them called now, of course, a video editing uh, capacity and photography and all sorts of other stuff. So Adobe, I'm sure you know about. But you can pay for just the audio part if you want. It costs me, I think, 240 round a month. But obviously that's what I do. So you might not want to spend 240 round a month. But anyway, Adobe is a very, very powerful, very complex tool. Um, you probably wouldn't need something like that. So you need to be able to edit. Um, and then not much else apart from that, really. You just then need to learn the, the process of, of getting a podcast established and uploaded and, and that kind of thing. And that's not too difficult. Um, has that helped? Is there a skill I've missed? <laughs> no, that's good. Oh, you need to be able to record. You need to be able to record. And people um, think that, um, yes, there's lots of different ways of doing it, actually. And smartphones, in, you know, they've revolutionized our lives. I'm very, very old school, or I was until relatively recently, about recording quality and what you one would need in order to record something. Um, in my case, would be a microphone, headphones, and quite a sophisticated recorder. However, I have been proved wrong. Um, all of last year, when I had two presenters, I'm in Grahamstown. By the way, I didn't say where I was, I'm in Grahamstown. Um, I'm in Grahamstown, I had a presenter in Cape Town, a presenter in Johannesburg, 
I think I met them face to face twice, once each. They did all their recording outside in the field at events, at doing interviews, one on one interviews on smartphones using a very clever uh, application called Twisted Wave. Um, and particularly iPhones have an exceptionally good microphone. Um, uh, but so the, the but um, you can the, you, the probably the least amount of equipment equipment that I think you should get is a mic. If you are going to do a lot of um, recording, you can record either onto your PC or onto your phone. Probably onto your PC if you're going to be at home. Get a reasonably and you don't, they don't have to cost a huge amount. You can you can spend less than a thousand, but get a microphone um, because. You can hear, we can all hear that um, even this, I'm not on iMac, which is quite a sophisticated machine, but the, a built-in microphone is not, is not a nice sound. Because apart from anything else, you're this far, whoop, can't see my hand, this far away from it, you should be no further than that far away from your, from your mic to get a nice close on mic sound. So I think the only thing I would say you really need is a, is a mic if you're going to do a lot of this. But you can achieve an enormous amount with a, piece, with a, with a, a desktop or a laptop and and uh, and a phone. All right, thank you. Um, one of the other questions uh, that Ian asked was about choosing a platform to host the podcast. Okay, so um, I personally am a Iono fan. Does anyone here know? Have you come across I Iono? I O N O? No. At all? Anyone? That's good. Um, okay, so iono.fm, if you Google them, you will find them, are the biggest podcasting platform in South Africa, and they are fabulous. Um, uh, they didn't pay me to say that. Um, they, are, they are local. They do uh, an enormous amount of podcast hosting. Um, they do all the SABC's podcasts. They do all Cohesos podcasts. Uh, they do all Gareth Cliff's, Cliff Central podcasts. Uh, go and have a look at them. Um, I like it because it's exceptionally user-friendly. It's very, very easy to, it's a very easy interface. Um, you can get a, an account with them for free um, if you are uh, just having one podcast. So just if you simply want to have your, you, they have sort of basically three tiers. You'll become a provider, a channel and an episode. So if, you're, if you're just, it's just one provider with one podcast, which probably most of you will be, certainly to begin with, then you can do it for free. And it's a very, very, very easy interface to work with. Um, it basically allows you to upload audio, upload a photograph, upload the blurb, um, and uh, you can then um, get yourself uh, they take you through the registering on iTunes process. You can put it on lots of other podcast platforms. Uh, I, I can't speak highly enough of them. And if something goes wrong, and in fact it happened to me this morning where something did go wrong, um, they're very, very good at uh, their, 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 their backup service is very, very good. So um, that is the podcast, uh, the platform I use. And it's particularly fine because it's a, it's a South African one. There are others. There's Blueberry, I think, um, in the States, which I think people really like. Um, you could use SoundCloud. I don't know if people here are also using SoundCloud. Um, Charlotte, what do you use for your podcast? Yeah, I, I use SoundCloud to start with, uh, but then our station manager for the other podcasts put them onto Buzzsprout. Uh, so okay. we've moved over there, yeah. And um, they're fine. You know, once you learn how the interface works, it's fine. Buzzsprout is a little bit, little bit more expensive than SoundCloud, um, but then it hasn't had the rumors of going under every couple of months. So people feel a little bit more secure on, on those sprouts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so um, go, go and check Iono out. Um, the, the, one of the things I do like about them is that there's an enormous amount of Q&A information on there. If you, you can sort of trawl around and it will, they really do help you a lot in terms of, um, of, of, of getting you set up. Um, and of course, the, the other thing is that they are, they're a commercial platform. So the, the big downloads, um, you know, if you hit, uh, pay dirt and every you know getting thousands and thousands of downloads then they are set up in order to to place ads around your podcast and you can make millions and retire to the Bahamas and you never have to worry about this again um, so uh, that's the one that I use and that's the one I know most about SoundCloud I think works as you say Buzzsprout and there was another one that I came across the other day that I'd never heard of which handily I've forgotten the name of. I'll look it up. But I mean, again, the one thing that is worth remembering is, and I'm sure you do know this, is that Podbean, yes, Cole, that's, that's been around for a long time. 
Um, so yes, do, uh, that's, that's another one. Um, I'm sure you know this, but I mean, there is so much information on the internet about podcasting. I mean, if you literally, you know, whatever specific question that you've got, just write it into Google and no doubt there will be some, somebody, probably somebody in India who's made a, a you know, a, a video about it, not just written about it. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of support. Um, so uh, yeah, Podbean is another one. Um, and somebody was, Andrew was asking about what type or spec of mic is good for podcasting. Um, it really depends on how much you want to spend. How much you want to spend. Um, it, 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 to be honest, most people are listening to podcasts, either on fairly crappy car speakers or not particularly brilliant in-ear speakers or on their computers. So obviously you could spend thousands on, on, a, on, on a, um, a microphone, um, but you probably don't need to. Uh, Rode, R-H-O-D-E, is a very, very good make. I know they do um, uh, podcasts for iPhones. Um, if you go on to take a lot, there are quite a few quite nice sort of around a thousand round mark um, microphones. To be honest, it's not really about the quality of the mic. What I'm trying to avoid you doing is recording at this level on a this level there we go um, on a crappy on a on a crappy built-in PC mic. As long as you've got hang on, hold on. <laughs> I had one here that I had earlier. I think I do. Okay, so this is my my recording device. It's a Zoom. They're very cute these because they are also this is the recording device, but it also turns into a microphone. Um, with a handle, but anyway, I won't try and do. So, so that's what we need to be seeing: the microphone here, so that you're getting a decent sound. And as long as you're doing that, um, then you know, if you spend sort of eight or nine hundred round on a mic, you're going to get something good enough. Um, uh, yeah, Shaw is obviously a good make. Um, you, you have a look as well on, on, on the, the mics that specialise. The, the, there are um, uh, mics that are specially, or, or work particularly well with phones, um, and you might find you use those a lot, especially if you decide you're going to go out and record in the field, that you're, you're recording, um, you're going to go and do an interview with somebody, for instance. You're probably going to do it on your phone, and you, know, you do not want to be doing this with your phone it would just it'll all be horrible you need a mic to do that with um yes hannah charlotte Kemp. oh yes no, no, you said that i uh, know buzzsprout sound well yes i think blueberry is um there's no e i think it's just b-l-u-b-e-double-r-y um do you want to ask a question about the recommended length for a podcast oh well that's a piece of string thing isn't it um you see, whatever I say, there's going to be an exception to it. So there's, um, there's a, there are podcasts, incredibly successful podcasts in the States that are over an hour, just because they're so good. You know, there's, it's, um, see, I've, I've lost my mind. I can't remember who it is. There's this, there's one of the top podcasters is just, it's just him is sitting in his uh, sitting room with a microphone. He's just, it's just the way he interviews and just talks to people. It's Jeff, somebody or other, Jeff something experienced, can't remember. Anyway, um, to be honest, though, in, your ca in, in, in this case of us, and I mean, I'm including myself in this, much longer than half an hour is probably not going to be very sustainable because, you know, unless it's absolutely brilliant, you probably, a half an hour is probably enough. Um, around between 20 minutes and half an hour, if it's an informational thing, is probably fine. As I say, you could decide that you want to do a sort of, daily two minuter. Um, there is a uh, The Happiness Podcast by Gretchen, can't remember her surname, is, a, is five minutes long and it's incredibly popular. It's um, sort of thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners. So, but I, I, shorter on the whole is a bit better. Um, much more than half an hour, I, I would say you'd have to be really something quite special in order to keep that just to, to sustain people's listening yeah 
I, I just want to recount a, st uh, a situation that I had um, about a podcast I created, which was purely by accident. Uh, this but, was probably a podcast. <laughs> it's a good name well, for it. Uh, it was six or seven years ago, uh, really a long time ago, before I came to Cape Town. Um, I had written a book about my business failure. So uh, my, my speaking topic was about, you know, overcoming failure and, uh, you know, talking around that. And I discovered that there was a, a conference in the States called FailCon. So it's a conference with entrepreneurs and startups, and they all come together and they discuss their, their failure and everything. And, and I thought this was a brilliant concept. And, but I was still, I mean, I was very new in my speaking career and experimenting with a whole lot of things. So I uh, picked up this concept of FailCon and said, you know, this is the kind of thing we need in South Africa where instead of um, failure and financial failure being a taboo, we should actually talk about it because when we talk about it, we resolve issues. Uh, and look here in, in, in the States, they do this thing called FailCon. My podcast, the, the recording that I did was about uh, maybe about six minutes long. And we did a little intro and outro and it was just literally an experiment. And I didn't even know to host it anywhere and I didn't put it up into iTunes or anything. So it was hosted on my own website. And then I forgot about it because I got involved in, in other things because I always have my brain doing 10 things at once. So I completely forgot about my podcast. And then months later, um, my hosting company of my website um, starts sending me emails saying that my... Um, I've used up my bandwidth and I never did. I mean, I never got, I never posted enough photographs or videos or anything or had enough people on my website to have that happen. Um, but it happened two months in a row and we couldn't work out what it was. And then eventually I had to pay for extra bandwidth because so many people were accessing my website. And when we really dived into this to explore what it was, the six minute podcast had been accessed thousands and thousands of times because the next um, FailCon was coming up in the States and they were advertising it. So people were going into Google looking for FailCon, oh, seeing my podcast and listening to my podcast advertise their <laughs> FailCon. And nobody bought my book and nobody hired me to speak. <laughs> but uh, because I hadn't positioned it that way. It was just, it was just literally a, an experiment. Um, but, you know, if we hit the right topic, if, if what we're talking yeah. about is, is valuable, um, yeah. There are people who will find us, even if we're yeah. not doing the marketing yeah. that we are responsible for doing for ourselves, for our own marketing. Yeah. Uh, well, our own and, and I mean, podcasts are searchable. And, and every time you put up a podcast, you're putting in metadata, or you should be um, putting in tags, putting in metadata. I mean, that's all part of what you do when you're putting the thing up. So, um, I mean, I'm not by any stretch of anybody's imagination an SEO. And I wouldn't even say I'm not an expert. I don't really know. I wouldn't even know where to start, but, but, but it is, you know, it is one of the things that you can do. Um, and Siki, I've realized, are you still there? That you, you asked another question about, um, how do you facilitate the process of selling or marketing on a podcast without coming off too strong or like you're trying to sell or direct potential business to your website or work platforms? You see, this is an interesting question because I don't know if any of you are aware of Brad Brown. Do you know Brad Brown? He is actually a sports presenter on um, SAFM. And he's big into podcasting and does a lot of it. Um, and we represent very different parts of this podcasting spectrum in, in our... our um, he's very successful at it, by the way, can I just say. Um, but in terms of our attitude to content, so I... I, I for me, content, good content, good quality content, stuff that people genuinely want to listen to and love is, is what I'm focused on. He doesn't actually worry about content too much. He is actually only putting out podcasts in order to get people to websites and to sell them things. He calls his podcasts audio calling cards. And I mean, he's quite open about this. He's, it's not that he thinks they're bad, but he just doesn't see them as an end in themselves. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know which one of us is right. I don't want to, you know, I, I have a particular passion for creating great content um, and I shall probably be poor, poor forever. But, but that was, is always going to be my focus and it's always going to be, that is what I'm going to be trying to, to make successful. Um, but Nsiki, you're quite right. It's, it, you're right, you, you know, this is, for a lot of people, it is a commercial thing and you want to, for, for me, I think, what I would, would say is, 
you are giving people value by giving them great content. Association with that content is valuable, so sponsorship is a potential. Um, uh, inspiring people to think you are a fantastic product because you've given them this fantastic stuff is in itself valuable. Um, if you are going to, but the other thing is actually that it is possible to put adverts and direct messages into podcasts. If any of you are podcast listeners, I'm sure you'll know that you listen to adverts in podcasts because half the time you're driving and you can't fast forward over them and it doesn't really matter. I mean, all the American podcasts that I listen to have adverts in them. And I know, I know that, you know, MailChimp sponsored Serial, and I know that Blue Apron sponsored S-Town, and I know that the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation sponsors um, Radiolab because I do listen to this stuff. Um, and actually, it's, it, it, most podcast listeners don't really mind. So it's possible to get messages in there. I think maybe if you're selling yourself, um, I don't know, I think, I think sometimes it is perfectly possible to, at the end, I and mean, we did this with the resilience workshop we did in Cape Town recently through the village. Um, we did a, a really, I thought, good a very powerful interview with one of the speakers. And at the end, we said, you know, there's a workshop, sign up. And people do. So um, as long as you're not being sort of tacky about it and sidling up to people trying to offer them sort of dodgy insurance, I think that um, you, you, can, you can use it as a, as a platform to getting, for getting your selling message across. But I think that becomes much more doable if you're giving people genuine value in the content that you're offering. Hang on. Okay. Are there any other questions? I don't think, I think everyone's gone to have a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are there other are are there questions? <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Replied, she said it's a, an interesting and tricky balance between the cell and the purity of content. Uh, all right, Mandy Russell. Um, so this is just more something that I've learned recently and just sharing because I'm interested in your view, Jane, um, yeah. that it's quite important to get people onto your own database and be having your own relationship with them because there isn't an ability to guarantee that you will have access, you know, or that it's about forming that own personal relationship with people via giveaways or something that would have them join your list. What's your view about that? I think that that's, um, I mean, there are two, I think that's a very uh, important, no, so let me start with again. If you can do that, I think it's very effective. There are two things about podcasts that are, make them very, very different from other audio content. One is this niching, this ability to, talk to a community all of whom have you know a similar interest um because it's it, it really is the key to uh, i think good pod podcasting success the other thing is that it, it is a very good way of having two-way communication because you know who you're talking to if you're on if your podcast has a home online uh, or it has a social media page, for instance, then people can start talking back to you and you can actually have a very meaningful two-way conversation. And because you haven't got 10 million listeners, but you might have 100,000 listeners or even 50,000 listeners or even 10,000 listeners, you can get some really good dialogue going and that becomes really quite powerful. Um, and you can, you can grow that community um, because then your people become, you know, they'll tell their people about your stuff and then their people will tell that, you know, that's the whole viral thing. So um, creating a two-way conversation and a database um, so that you can have an email, that you can have a Facebook page, that you can have a Twitter feed. Those are all ways of, of keeping that communication going. And also, um, what can happen is then your listeners start generating your content. So, you know, you can do things like ask, you know, say, I'm going to have a particular expert on, start sending me questions, um, or do a Facebook Live event, or, um, you know, ask people for topics that you'd like, they'd like you to cover. And then your value goes up because you're responding directly to specific things that people are asking. So that, that kind of two-way communication is very powerful. It's something that podcasts can do very well. Of course, the one thing podcasts aren't most of the time is live. So you don't have 
that sort of live radio thing. But it is a way of of getting to know your listeners if you've got that two way communication going on. The other thing about Iona, and I'm, I like I don't know too much about other podcast platforms, so they may also be able to do it. Um, but Iona is set up to know as much as possible about your listeners. So once you start getting some decent numbers, they have an enormous amount of um, analytics uh, there that can tell you where your listeners are, what they're using. Uh, they've got a whole way of telling how wealthy they are, you know, what they're interested in, how long they listen for, um, what devices they're using. I mean, there, there's a lot, and, and that can be very, very useful because then you can start potentially selling your audience if you want to, um, sponsors and you it does allow you to to tell your sponsors exactly who it is that they're they're using so yes in answer to your question that kind of 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 network and databasing is, is a really good idea yeah that's powerful uh ian has asked if there are any tips on creating uh an inviting intro and ending and Nsiki has asked something similar she says any tips on choosing a name that grabs the audience and sets you apart um, my, my main tip on creating an inviting intro is employ me. Um, no, uh, you can do, listen, you, you know, the thing is, now that we are all potentially radio producers, um, it's quite tragic for me because I've been radio, producing radio programs since 1989. So what have I been doing all this time for now everybody can do it. But um, you um, attune your ears, go and listen to... Um, good podcasting, you can do something very effective with just good music. You can use, you can find lots of places on the internet which um, has what they call library music or royalty free music. So music that you can use without having to pay for it. Um, and, and don't use commercial music because then you'll get fined. Um, uh, a good piece of music, well, you know, that comes in when it's supposed to, that fades when it's supposed to. You can do that. It's very simple uh, on an editing show, on, on, on a, a simple editing program. Um, I think listeners, it doesn't have to be complex. Some of the stuff I do is quite complex, but it doesn't have to be complex, but it does have to be good quality and to sound like you care about how the thing sounds. So go and go and listen. I mean, listen to the beginning of um, Radio Lab, for instance. That's a, quite a fun one. But if you listen to Gretchen, uh, we still can't remember her name, the Happiness uh, podcast, it is literally uh, music comes in, it dips a little bit. She says, hi, this is the Happiness podcast. It comes up again, it goes down and off she goes. Um, you don't have to have anything. What was I listening to? Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell's Revisionist History. Incredibly successful podcast. Very nicely done. It's really just Malcolm Gladwell talking. There is no beginning to that, as far as I can tell. I think he just starts talking. Um, so it's, a, it's up to you. Um, just make it slick. Don't make it, you know, bad recording somebody clearing their throat or trying to get a Skype interview to work. Just, so that's, that's all. But I mean, really have fun listening to stuff and then you'll, you'll find that there are things you want to copy or ideas you want to steal. And names, similarly, you know, it's like choosing a book title, isn't it? I mean, you go, go, and, go, and, go and look on iTunes and see what leaps out at you. Um, it's impossible to, yeah, it's impossible to say, but they don't have to be complicated. Remember on iTunes, you've only got a little square, a very little square. Um, so if it's too busy and it's too complicated and it's too verbose, then it will, it will miss. A lot of the things that you're used to doing for social media are the kinds of rules that you're going to be using for um, podcasting. Because podcasting is part of social media, really. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, yeah, set your podcast. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's only one thing that is true. Um, is that uh, I think, particularly for the sort of stuff that you guys might be doing, having a person on your logo actually makes a difference. I think that, um, especially if you, it, it's very much centred on you, I think having you on the logo, a good picture of you, um, is, is quite a good idea. That's the only thing I would say. But as I say, go and have a look, go and have a listen, and you'll soon get inspired. Fantastic. 
Uh, Jane, I, I sense that we could uh, keep asking questions for, for some time because, you know, every time you say something, I think of two or three more that, that I'd like to ask. <laughs> um, but, but I, I actually wanted to address a comment where you said, you know, you've been producing radio for such a long time and now anybody can, you know, produce their own. And, and that's, that's a problem we have because as a professional speaker, you, you realize after 10, 15 years of speaking that there are some, some skills and some really good ingrained habits and a way of reading the audience and a way of, of just elevating that extra 20% that makes you professional. Uh, yeah. which is very different from people who are starting uh, out in their career. And um, amateurs looking in think, oh, that's easy, I can do that. But yeah. uh, when you start, there's a lot more to it. So, yes. so I know that I've been doing my radio show for about eight, eight nine months now. I know that I've got better. Uh, but, you know, one conversation like this, and I'm going, wow, there's, you know, 10 things that I'd need to address to actually be a more professional host uh, on, on a radio show. Um, and... And the skill between the radio show and the podcast is actually different as well. So, so yeah. there's a lot more we could, we could learn. Yes, um, and I do think, I, I think, do go and listen to as many things as possible. Um, the other thing that people do tend to forget, I mean, I, I am reasonably confident that I do know things that other people won't. There are reasons, there, there are things, that, and, and, and that in fact is why there's a lot of not very good stuff on the internet yes. because people do think that they can do it and then they suddenly think oh hang on this isn't sounding great um it is tempting to think perhaps that you can just add lib stuff that's the other thing that i find quite difficult to listen to is people aren't to some extent scripted um i think it, it unless you're really 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 good at it uh and i mean you potentially are all good at it i still think you need some degree of scripting even if it's just the beginning to let make your audience feel safe with you to know okay this is not going to be a painful 10 minutes it's going to be a comfortable and engaging 10 minutes um but again i think go and listen go and listen to different different kinds of, of things because there are there's so much stuff out there yeah fantastic all right um i think we're going to wrap it up we're almost at eight o'clock and uh, there's lots of people who have to to get off and ian has to get to his meeting and yes um, has he started moving yet? <laughs> we can't tell. Um, and there's some other, um, some comments here from, from people. Um, Jane, thank you very much. I just want to encourage everybody, we need to get started. You can't get better until you got started. Uh, mm -hmm. So don't, don't stress that you're not going to be good enough in the beginning. Uh, to be honest, not many people are going to hear what you're doing in the beginning. Um, no. and but, but actually, I mean, you could start, you could, you don't have to post everything to begin with. I would make some and then in fact, make some, get better at it, um, edit some, get, learn to edit and, and, and get the most. And then actually, if you've got a stockpile, because what, you know, podcasting is a bit like blogging, you know, people start off and they blog and they blog every week or they blog every day. And then you get the post that goes, oh, sorry, I haven't been blogging for a while. And then eventually it all, because it's actually hard work, you, you know, to yeah. keep on doing. It. And actually, you're only going to be successful if you keep on doing it. You make a promise to your listener that you are going to do this every week and you've got to do it every week. Um, so actually having a whole bunch in the can is, is, a, is not a bad thing at all. It allows you to be, you know, very regular because you, you're ahead of yourself. So um, don't feel that you have to post the early stuff, you know, try it out first. Get someone to listen to it. <laughs> tell you, be someone honest, someone who can tell you that <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> I don't know about the other platforms, um, but with the two that I've used, SoundCloud and Buzzsprout, you can load up your podcast and just like almost every other um, social media, it doesn't have to be public. So you can right. just have YouTube, you can make it private. And then you take that link and you share it with your colleagues, with your mastermind group, with your chapter um, colleagues and get some feedback. And if it's yeah. no good, you take it down, you try again. But, yeah. um, and, and certainly on, on you, know, you can uh, schedule publish so you can decide you know you can you can schedule things so that you can you can make a whole bunch make them great and then you know they'll just uh, you know they'll publish as you as you as you schedule them so yeah don't um don't feel that you have to be up and out there straight away you know that's because you only get a chance to do it first time once so um yeah. you know have a few goes at it all right Jane, thank you very much. Um, you certainly inspired me to do some more work. Good. Well, I'm excited. I'm pleased. I mean, keep in touch with me if you want to ask me questions. And I'm very excited. The more people are podcasting and the more people are into it and the more people are talking about podcasting as if it isn't from another planet, 
the better as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, that's fantastic. Great. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for all of your um, contributions.